this lesson, we're going to look at opportunities and very excited to run through opportunities. So this is where we start to get into the nitty gritty of selling and working contacts through different stages of the sales cycle. And opportunities is how we manage the progress of moving someone through your sales process. So let's dive right into the screen share and find out how to do it. So the first thing we want to do is we probably want to look at how the opportunities are represented. Um, and to do that, you need a pipeline, right? So a pipeline, of course, is uh, a series of opportunities categorized into different stages. So to have a look at this, we could create a new pipeline. And so this pipeline would be something like sales. Okay, and we could say, well, the first thing that they do is they're interested. The second thing they do is they have a demo. Then they have a proposal sent. Then they have a proposal signed. And then they cancel. No interest and various other bits and pieces. Now, it doesn't mean that it's always sequential and that, you know, this stage leads directly to this stage. You could jump from one to the other, but you do try to put what you can in the most sequential way. So a couple of things to note here. Um, if you want this to contribute from the pie chart on the dashboard, leave it. But if you do, then, sorry, if you do not, and you can click it off. So if it's got color, it's not gonna contribute. If it does, it will. Now, why would you do this, right? Well, a lot of the time, leads have potential values assigned to them. And so someone who's interested might be too early to really quantitatively measure what kind of impact they're gonna have on top or bottom line revenue. And so you don't want this to contribute to any sort of forecast, right? The other thing is that you don't want it to contribute to the conversion rates. So we can talk about that soon, but not having it in the funnel will uh, give you a better understanding of conversion rates. So a little bit advanced, but most of the time by default, you leave these on if you want to remove them, you can. If you want to add some more, you can. And then we say, you know, is this visible, right? In the funnel chart? Yeah, of course. In, is it visible in the pie chart? Yes, right? So you can have this completely not visible on those two visualizations. Otherwise, it will be turned on. So we could click save. And off we go, here is a pipeline for us, created. Now, uh, let's look at an existing pipeline. So now we look at the opportunities, right? So we can create a new opportunity. And the way that we create a new opportunity is by going into opportunities, clicking new. And of course, now you can look at the contact name. Now, if you start typing, you'll just type in that contact's name the opportunity information, which pipeline it belongs to, and so on. Now, I think it's unlikely that you would create an opportunity in this way. Normally, opportunities are created through automation using workflow uh, as the first stage that they go into. So <coughs> let's have a look at how you would do that against a, an existing contact. So here's an existing contact. I scroll down. I see which opportunities this contact related to. It pre-fills out all the details about who they are and I fill it in this way. Now, put them in a stage. You then give them a status. So this is the conversion rate identifier. So something is either open, one lost or abandoned. Now, I would say that you only need three. It's either one open or lost. And it's really like apathy, right? It'd be the fourth kind of option here, but basically 33% chance of winning somebody, they either go with you or go with a competitor, which means you lost it, or they did nothing, which means you lost it, or you won it because you closed the deal. 
So that's a bit of an understanding there on the conversion uh, outcomes. And then we wanna have an opportunity owner. So you have your sales people, and then you'd have the source. Now this source is either keyed in manually, like I'm doing here now, or it can be pulled through automatically from something like a Facebook lead form, uh, or you can identify which value to give that based on the automation you're running to create the opportunity in the first place. And the workflows, there is a huge set of lessons around workflows, so don't worry, you'll get there. But good to get an understanding of what values does an opportunity object expect. So once we've created an opportunity, I haven't given it a monetary value, that's okay. Now I can go and look at the opportunities for this particular pipeline. And you can see here, Joseph three, forecast for quarter three. It's assigned to me. And you can actually manipulate some of the information that's displayed here. So to do that, what we can do here is we can say, let's pull in additional info. So we're gonna pull in any notes that we've created, the company name, and if there's any appointments assigned to them, we can pull through that calendar event. If you wanna download them, you can download them into some sort of CSV file, opportunities.csv, great. This is useful if you've got customers that are using salesforce.com or something like that. So this is like, they wanna go and bulk, create a list of opportunities that were created from their actual marketing system. And of course, now we can use different filters, right? So let's change the pipeline. That's gonna give us a set of opportunities for a completely different pipeline. Otherwise, we're looking at this pipeline by owner, which is me. And, you know, this used to be useful in that I wanted to see certain campaigns only uh, it's probably less relevant now than it ever has been with workflows, but it is there if you want it. And of course, this is only gonna be showing open opportunities. You wouldn't believe how many times we hear from support, you know, I can't find this opportunity. And because by default, it's showing only the open ones, not all the deals you've actually closed. So that's it for this lesson. We'll go into more detail in the next one.